George A. Romero changed the realm of horror forever after Night of the Living Dead was unleashed upon the world. At the time, moviegoers couldn't imagine anything more frightening than humanity being turned into mindless zombies who were compelled to devour everyone on sight. Having said that, there are a horde of ghoulish satires that never get the credit they rightfully deserve. If you're hungry for more flesh-eating features that tickle your funny bone, then look no further. As I'm Adam, this is What Culture Horror, and here are 10 zombie comedy horror movies you probably haven't seen. Number 10, Dead Heat. Dead Heat centers around Mortis and Bigelow, two detectives who are tasked with taking down zombie criminals. Not long into the investigation, however, Mortis is killed in the line of duty. When he's resurrected, Mortis gets right back to work, proving you can't keep a good cop dead. That's not a joke, that's literally the film's tagline. Decomposing at a rapid rate, Mortis must solve his own murder before he withers away. Now Dead Heat is far from perfect, the dialogue isn't great and the jokes are even worse, but thanks to the lead's effortless chemistry and comic timing, they make the dumbest gags work. For example, anyone who can make the line, you have the right to remain disgusting, sound funny, deserves an Oscar. Despite the small budget, the special effects are genuinely jaw-dropping, and the scene where Mortis watches a woman decay before his eyes is sure to make almost anyone yell out, how the hell did they do that? If you enjoyed the buddy cop dynamic of Lethal Weapon, but always felt like it needed more zombies, Dead Heat is worth a look. Number 9, Juan of the Dead. Based on the title, Juan of the Dead sounds like a Shaun of the Dead clone, especially since the protagonists of both films wield a wooden paddle as their primary weapon. But rest assured, this Spanish-Cuban comedy is anything but a lazy rehash. The story revolves around slacker Juan, whose life is turned upside down when Cuba becomes overrun by killer cadavers. When authorities refuse to resolve the issue, Juan becomes a zombie killer for hire to make ends meet. Even though Juan of the Dead has cliched characters, it gets away with it thanks to the solid performances and sharp dialogue. It also boasts some gnarly gore and tremendous kills, with one particular highlight seeing a horde of flesh eaters skewered simultaneously by a razor wire, much like in Ghost Ship's prologue. Though the political subtext is as subtle as a sledgehammer, it's surprisingly educational. Also, the idea that the government refuses to acknowledge the dead uprising is genius. The fact one of the dead is able to balance goofy slapstick and politically charged drama is a feat few horror comedies have managed to pull off as effectively. Number 8. Wormwood a zombie comedy has to do more than poke fun at itself if it wishes to make a lasting impression. Witty dialogue and brutal kills are welcome, but a zombie flick needs to offer something new if it expects to be remembered. Although Wormwood took inspiration from trailblazers like Evil Dead, Bad Taste and Mad Max, the Aussie comedy's overflow of innovation lets it stand on its own merits. This time around, the undead plague is spread by the zombies' breath, not their bite. For this reason, our hero Barry and his friends must strategize a accordingly, wearing masks and helmets to avoid being infected. But that's not the only new idea Wormwood has to offer. Barry's sister develops the ability to control the brain-dead bunch after she's infected, giving the group an edge against their slobbering enemies. On top of that, the creature's blood works like gasoline, encouraging Barry to use the nasty husks to fuel up his zombie-killing vehicle. Wormwood may be short, but it makes every second count, from its explosive opening to its blood-soaked climax. If you're hungry for more, check out the equally imaginative sequel, Wormwood Apocalypse. Number 7. Little Monsters In between making the Star Wars sequels, Us and Black Panther, Lupita Nyong'o found time to star in the laugh-out-loud horror Little Monsters. Our story opens with a has-been musician Dave tagging along on his brother's school trip to hook up with the singing teacher Mrs. Caroline. When a zombie outbreak occurs on their travels, Caroline has to find elaborate ways to hide the truth from the children to avoid them panicking. Looking for survivors, Caroline is forced to team up with the children's entertainer Teddy McGiggle. Even though Little Monsters' premise is clever, it's the lead actor's performances that carry the movie. Nyong'o acts so sincere, it's like the Academy Award winner wasn't aware she was in a comedy, making her scenes 10 times funnier. Also, hats off to Josh Gad. Playing a belligerent, foul-mouthed, children-hating, sex-crazed alcoholic, the Frozen star kills it in the role. Though Gad is synonymous with the Disney character Olaf, there's no question this performance here is a career highlight. Even if zombie movies aren't your cup of tea, Little Monsters is worth a watch, purely for the comedic and acting talents of the leads. 
Number 6. Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse Based on his work on Happy Death Day and Freaky, its obvious director and writer Christopher Landon has a talent for horror comedy. Ironically, Landon's lesser known film, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, is arguably his finest work. The story follows three teenagers who are constantly harassed for being Boy Scouts. When their hometown is overrun with flesh-consuming revenants, the trio finally have a chance to put their scouting skills to the test and save the day. Upon its release, reviews for Scout's Guide were far from generous, regarding it as an artless retread of superior horror parodies. But if you read the reviews after watching this underrated gem, you'll wonder if the critics saw the same movie. Scout's Guide covers all bases, filling every scene with quickfire dialogue, visual gags, and double entendres galore. Although the three leads are solid, David Koechner makes every moment of his brief appearance count, and Sarah Dumont plays the badass final girl to a T. The laugh-a-minute comedy boasts a plethora of creative zombie kills that not even the biggest horror veterans will have seen before. Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse may have bombed, but it could very well become a cult classic in the future. Now I want to hear from you. What is one zombie movie that you think does not get enough appreciation? Make sure you let us know down in the comments, and while you're there, you know the usual stuff. Give us a like and a subscribe. Alright, now back to the list. Number 5. Freaks of Nature Devised by the co-writer of 22 Jump Street and 2021's Mortal Kombat, it's no surprise Freaks of Nature is surreal, hilarious, gross, and astoundingly violent. In this zany comedy, the townsfolk of Dilford are forced to live amongst supernatural creatures. Vampires are the cool kids, and zombies are the social outcasts, leaving humans right smack in the middle. But when visitors from beyond the stars declare war on the town, a human, a ghoul, and a bloodsucker join forces to kick their galactic asses. Even though the story beats are nothing new, Freaks of Nature finds a way to feel fresh. Using the social hierarchy of a high school to represent the dynamics between humans, zombies, and vampires is as ridiculous as it is genius. The one-dimensional characters can be forgiven, since every line is delivered perfectly by the top-of-the-line comedic cast, which includes Bob Odenkirk, Keegan-Michael Key, Joan Cusack, Dennis Leary, and Patton Oswalt. Freaks of Nature also finds a way to explore social issues without coming across as ham-fisted or jarring, despite the preposterous premise. And for the final cherry on top, eccentric German filmmaker Werner Herzog plays an alien. Who doesn't want to see that? Number 4. Doghouse in Doghouse, recent divorcee Vince readies for a drunken weekend with his mates to forget about his lady troubles. Unfortunately, Vince's plan falls apart almost immediately when the gang discover the local women have been turned into cannibals who indistinctively attack anyone with high testosterone. In a nutshell, these zombirds eat any man in sight. Anyone expecting 90 minutes of sexist jokes will be happy to know the comedy in Doghouse is far more versatile than the concept suggests. Some of the funnier moments include the men turning a super soaker into a flamethrower, or using a remote control car to lure the cannibals away. Although there are a slew of gender-related gags, they never become tiresome, thanks to the tight script and the comedic delivery of the main cast. Also, there is an underlying mystery behind why only the women in the area have been infected by the virus, which is sure to keep the audience intrigued until the big reveal. It might be easy to dismiss Doghouse due to its ludicrous premise, but it's much funnier and clever than it has any right to be. Number 3. Ah! Zombies! 2007's Our Zombies is also known as Wasting Away. Turning the genre on its undead head, this horror comedy explores a zombie invasion from the point of view of the zombies. As clever as this idea is, it's not the only thing this indie flick has up its sleeve. Despite transforming into brain-craving ghouls, the four main characters still see themselves as human. To make it crystal clear what's real and what isn't, the scenes in reality are in black and white, and the coloured scenes are what the zombies perceive. Not only does Our Zombies have an awesome premise, it explores every facet of it. Since the shambling corpses are slow, they perceive everything at top speed. When they can't understand why a phone operator is speaking so quickly, they assume the line has a faulty connection. Also, drunks and zombies can communicate perfectly, since they both experience cognitive disorientation. And when the dead begin to understand what's happened to them, it's cool to see the real world and fake world merging together. There are some piercing issues, but it's still refreshing to see our zombies have such a fresh take on the genre. Number 2. Anna and the Apocalypse 
Before going viral with his video series, Ryan Gosling Won't Eat His Cereal, Ryan McHenry directed a zombie musical short called Zombie Musical. Just as McHenry was preparing to turn his work into a feature called Anna and the Apocalypse, the Scottish director was struck down by bone cancer, dying at 27. Refusing to let his dream go, McHenry's work colleagues soldiered on and completed the project. From the get-go, it's obvious the filmmakers involved put their heart and soul into Anna and the Apocalypse, throwing in elaborate dance numbers, phenomenal singing, catchy lyrics, heavily choreographed action, and gruesome zombie kills. After watching the titular character dancing her heart out on the streets in the opening while her neighbours are turned into zombie food, you know the next 90 minutes are going to be a blast. Even though horror comedies tend to laugh away the most gruesome deaths, Anna in the Apocalypse takes the subject matter very seriously. The demise of every central character has weight to it, making viewers care far more about the main ensemble than they probably expected to. Although it's difficult to juggle so many wacky ideas in such a bonkers musical, Anna in the Apocalypse pulls it off flawlessly. Great job guys, you did Ryan McHenry proud. Number 1. One Cut of the Dead in Shinichiro Hueda's One Cut of the Dead, a washed-up director is frustrated by the fact his zombie B-movie isn't coming together. When the cast and crew are attacked by real zombies, the director decides to continue recording, turning his horror flick into a real-time documentary. This may sound like an exaggeration, but One Cut of the Dead is a film unlike any other, except for the underwhelming French remake. Despite being limited by a measly $20,000 budget, Hueda managed to craft one of the smartest horror movies ever ever. Opening with an unbroken 37 minute long shot, One Cut of the Dead is sure to grab anyone's attention right from the beginning. Just as it looks like everything is wrapping up nicely, the story goes in a direction nobody is prepared for, flooring viewers yet again. Without spoiling anything, the second half recontextualizes the first half of the film, forcing viewers to see the overarching narrative in a completely different way. Going into One Cut of the Dead blind is the best choice, since it's more satisfying when viewers haven't the slightest clue how everything is going to play out.